Okay, it's 4.30. I'm going to call this special meeting of the Common Council to order. As soon as we have audio. Check one, two. Check one, two. Testing. There we go. All right. This meeting was called by the majority of the Common Council for the purpose of proposed ordinance number 11, which was introduced at our previous meeting. It's an ordinance amending complete streets. The ordinance reads, be it ordained that Article 7, Chapter 231 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Utica shall be amended by adding, the sec adding Section 2318 entitled Exemptions to read as follows. Section 231-8 exemptions. Notwithstanding the complete streets policies and principles cited herein, there shall be no bike lanes on Genesee Street from Oriskany Street to Cornelia Place. Further ordained that this ordinance shall take effect immediately. That is the piece on the agenda this evening. Uh, this is a special meeting, so clerk, please call the roll. Aiello, Friend, Miola, Urban, Beatrice, Williamson, Colasimo Testa, DeBrango, Galimi present. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silence for the deceased members of the council. Okay, we will be having public comment this evening, or this afternoon. The first person signed up to speak is Alex Arrington Peck. The Common Council has provided you a copy of Section 3244, Public Comment Period Rule. Are you in agreement with this? Yes, I am. Please state your name and you may begin. My name is Alex Arrington Peck. I live in downtown Utica and I moved here from Chicago, Illinois a year ago. I understand that I have up to four minutes to comment. At last count, 64,081. Kissimmee, Florida, Johnson City, Tennessee, San Clemente, California, Bayonne, New Jersey, East Orange, New Jersey, Shawnee, Kansas, Homestead, Florida, Rockville, Maryland, Delray Beach, Florida, Janesville, Wisconsin, Conway, Arkansas, Lorraine, Ohio, Montebello, California, New Bronzeville, Texas, Marysville, Washington, Ames, Iowa, Taylorsville, Utah, Bristol, Connecticut, Bowling Green, Kentucky, and Alpharetta, Georgia. These are all cities that have either the same or slightly larger populations in the city of Utica that have on-street on bike lanes for their citizens. In fact, in almost all of these cities, there are multiple streets that have bike lanes. Now here are the cities in New York that have bike lanes. New York City, Hampstead, Brookhaven, Buffalo, Rochester, Syracuse, Albany, New Rochelle, Schenectady, Troy, Niagara Falls, Saratoga Springs, Henrietta, and Binghamton. And the last five of those cities have less population than the city of Utica. I really, I struggle to understand why this conversation is happening. A, a council person stated that when a car is parked, it goes to open their door, the biker is gonna have to move into traffic. But what would happen if the biker was in a traffic lane and there was a car behind it and that person was gonna open their door? Well, that biker would actually be fo forced to move into traffic, farther into traffic, as bikers actually usually ride the traffic lane on the farthest right side. So then that would cause that car to swerve and make room for that biker, swerving in to a lane of occupied traffic. This would then make that car swerve closer and that biker move closer to the parked car. How does that validate an argument against a bike lane? In fact, that really states that there needs to be enhanced protection for bikers. This discussion feels less like a nuanced discussion of practical city policies and more like an effort to diminish the recently passed Complete Streets Initiative. It feels less like promoting the safety of pedestrians and drivers and more like the way to salvage a shred of a win against for those opposed to certain aspects of city life. This city is on the ascendancy. This is why I moved here, because I felt I could actually have a better life for me and my wife. We're seeking to attract people, young people like me and my wife, who moved here and make their permanent homes here. How can we look at policies like taking away bike lanes and feel that this city is ready to have more people and more businesses? 
In 2002, Mayor Tim Julian called Utica the city of possibilities. Sure, unless you want a bike lane down Genesee Street, then it's not. I yield my time. Thank you. Next speaker, Beth Harrington Peck. Hi, I'm Bethany Arrington Peck. Do I need to do all the fun things? Yeah, I, yeah, I was going to read that. So, uh, the Common Council provides you a copy of Section 3244 Public Comment Period Rule or in agreement with us. Sure, yes. Thank you. Please state your name and you may begin. Okay, Thanks. I'm Bethany Arrington Peck. You would see a lot more of me, but I host trivia at Nail Creek on Wednesdays, so you're missing out on that too. But, um, you know, it's interesting. I've been here about a year and some change, and I've found two things to be true about Uticans. One, y'all love good food. You love good food. Two, y'all like to complain. You like to complain a lot. And the things you like to complain the most about are things you have power to change. I've watched it time and time again in my short time here. Bike lanes help our community. I live downtown. I know what the traffic looked like. I'm tired of old white men telling me I don't know what's happening when I live there. Put in bike lanes, put in bike lanes. This is a simple, simple thing. It creates equity within our community and it also creates a sense of community because guess what? Not everyone can afford a car. So please consider doing that whether you like bikes or not because most of us do. Thank you. Thanks. Next speaker this evening is Michael Rice. If you could please come forward. Common Councils provided you a copy of Section 3244, Public Comment Period Rule. Are you in agreement with this? Yes, sir, I am. Please state your name and you may begin. My name is Michael Thomas Rice. I live at 41 Higby Road, Utica, New York, 13501. I'm not a constituent of Katie Allen, who spearheaded complete streets, but I consider her a friend. What I don't get is why the only person who's actually trying to make this area more inclusive, along with Celeste, what's the issue? Bike lanes actually help. You see, I find inherently classist and ableist to think that everyone has to have a car. Maybe we should stop making our city so car-centric and worry more about public transport. The bike lane is the first step in that. You have specific lanes at the corner of Jenny right across from where the uh, theater is. The Stanley? You have one specifically for buses. Only left turns by buses at this time. That's great. But the issue I have here, not everyone can afford a car. And the biggest issue to me is inherently just bad policy to not listen to people who will eventually fill these seats after you guys leave. None of us are immortal. We will all leave this mortal coil at some point in our lives. Leave a better foundation for the people who are going to come and be here after you are. And part of that is becoming a modern city. Part of that is putting bike lanes in. Maybe the next step is we focus more on public transit. This city's on the rise, much like the Harrington Pecks. I moved here three years ago for better opportunity. I love this city. We have great food. We have great people. We have a great way to change things, but we're all stuck in this rut of backroom politics that we can't seem to get our heads out. I come from Elmira, New York, a city that is still in a recession since 2008 because of constant mismanagement by city officials. You don't like it, fine. You don't have to vote for it. But if the majority of people coming here are speaking in favor of it, you guys gotta do better and actually listen to your constituents. We want the bike lane. I wanna see complete streets all the way up and down Genesee Street because it would make it safer. I can't tell you how many times I had to veer out of way of somebody, not a biker, another driver of a car who isn't paying attention. The problem is not more bikes. We need to make fewer cars on the road and make it safer for us all to not actually, you know, want to get hit by a car. It's a great way to invest in this city to make it more plausible for people to come to this city by listening to them. Do better. I yield my time. Todd McCarthy. Uh, Martha McCarthy, sorry. 
looked like a Y written down here. Sorry. Yeah, uh -huh. Thank you. The Common Council has provided you a copy of Section 3244, Public Comment Period Rule. Are you in agreement with this? Yes. Please state your name and may begin. Tom McCartha. I live on uh, Todd. I'm sorry. <coughs> uh, my name is Todd McCartha, and I live at 276 Genesee Street. Now, um, during the winter time, I don't have a car. I don't have money for, to afford a car. And the uh, uh, complete streets help me go back and forth during the winter when, I've, when the uh, sidewalks I have trouble through, getting through and back because the, it's snow covered. And um, I like to use the bike lanes last, past winter so I can travel to uh, school and the, to the bus stops. And, and um, so, <clears throat> also, um, I think it we can do. It's a lot safer for the bike lanes because it's safer for, for people like me who don't have a, um, enough money for vehicles, and uh, we need it can work because we just need to adjust the traffic lights, and. Uh, we need to adjust the traffic. It would work. work uh, it would work for uh, traffic. I heard a lot of people at work say that it won't. We just need to adjust the timing and put more data into it and stuff. But that's all I have to say. Thank you very much, Janice Martino. How are you doing? Common Councils provide you a copy of Section 3244, Public Comment Period Rule. Are you in agreement with this? Yes, I am. Please state your name and may begin. My name is Janice Martino. I live at 1126 Hoover Avenue, Utica. And unlike some of my friends that have spoken earlier, although we aren't friends and I don't know you, I have lived in this city my entire life. Um, I have three boys that have gone through the Utica City School District. They are 18, 20, and 22. And I'm pretty nervous because I've literally never done this before and am generally not inclined to do so. But I am very frustrated with this city's constant inability to embrace an infrastructure that will bring children like mine back to this city. What young people want are walkable, bikeable cities. My oldest son has moved to Pittsburgh, where they have an amazing transportation system and bike system and bike paths. And we, we seem to be doing everything in our power to work against that, to work against bringing those types of highly skilled young people back into our community. Um, I, I did a little bit of quick research here. I, I just heard about this today. I actually have some questions as to why this is happening in six days. I would imagine that's not typical that something would be put up, legislation would be proposed and then voted on within six days. I feel like that's really not enough time for us to have an opportunity as citizens to take a look at things and um, be able to give our input on that. Um, but what I can tell you is that in researching very quickly, if I could find any other cities in the state that have banned bike lanes in any way, shape, or form, what I found is exactly the opposite. As many others said, um, you know, every city that's comparable or to with which we compete um, f for you know technological and financial advances is doing exactly the opposite. Bike Rochester, the city of Rochester is dedicated to making this a world-class bicycling communica community. The Syracuse Bicycle Plan, the Troy Bicycle Connection Plans, Albany Bicycle Master Plan, Schenectady, which maybe is the what speaks the most to what we should be doing, is speaks about the opportunity they have to establish a bike plan that connects to the canalway because of um, the attraction of local users that this can bring to their city. Um, so I, I'm just trying to understand when every other you know world class city is moving in in a direction of making cities more accessible for multimodal transportation, how, we, how anybody can feel like this isn't a move backwards for us. And if, by the way, you feel that the current configuration is not working as it stands, 
how on earth would we say banning bike lanes is the answer to that? I mean, I, I struggle to find any time when banning is actually the answer, but if, if it's not working as it is, then let's work on a plane to make bike lanes work in our city because clearly um, if we want to be a world-class city in the future and I have committed my entire life living here I believe that we can be and I believe that we're moving in that direction but we can't do that without this thank you for your time thank you next speaker Julie Gaderos common councils provide you a copy of section 3244 public comment period rule are you in agreement with this my name is Julie Gadaris, and I am in favor of bike lanes on Genesee Street. Bike lanes create a healthier, safer, and greener community. They also will make downtown more accessible to everyone in our community. I would like to see uh, the city develop a master plan that would connect the Empire State Trail to Harbor Point to downtown. I have lived in cities as small as 25,000 people to half a million, and each of these cities had designated bike lanes that made me feel safer and incentivized me to bike places as opposed to drive. So I do encourage the council to vote in favor of bike lanes on Genesee Street. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Christina Schubert. If you can please come forward. Common Council has provided you a copy of Section 3244, Public Comment Period Rule. Are you in agreement with this? Yes. Thank you. Please Good state evening. your name and you may begin. Sorry. Good evening. My name is Christina Schubert. Um, my family is a resident of, uh, we are residents of South Utica. My husband and I are both educators. We moved to this area in uh, around 2008 from Raleigh, North Carolina. And in Raleigh, we were both extremely accustomed to riding our bikes everywhere. Raleigh and a lot of cities in the South have great bike infrastructure. Cars are used to um, seeing bikes on the road. Bicycles know how to be on the road safely. And um, so we felt very comfortable and, and relatively safe biking in Raleigh. When we moved up to Utica, we were hoping that we would be able to do the same in our new home. Um, unfortunately, we found that Utica was not nearly as hospitable to bicycles and pedestrians as uh, Raleigh had been. Um, I know when I first started riding my bike around, um, I encountered, I experienced several instances of road rage that made me feel extremely unsafe about riding my bikes on the streets of Utica. Um, I still do occasionally, but, but I don't feel comfortable um, for the most part. My husband um, regularly commuted to his job via bike, um, but he had some close calls as well. He was hit by a car at one point. Fortunately, it was a very minor incident. Um, but that speaks to the problem of how in the city um, there is not good education for drivers and cyclists about how to share roads. And so if you do not have bike lanes, um, I'm asking you, where is the investment into a massive education program for drivers and for cyclists so that we can share roads safely and not see more and more accidents and even fatalities um, among people in Utica. So please, please keep bike lanes. Um, moving away from bike lanes, I feel is really short-sighted and backwards thinking. And I, one of the things that's been so exciting about living in Utica the past few years is seeing the um, the directions that Utica is moving in and seeing uh, you know, a real excitement about the future of Utica. And I'd like to be a part of that. Um, and I'd like the leaders in charge to really um, want, to be, want Utica to be a more welcoming, um, a welcoming place where people feel comfortable to get around in a variety of different ways, um, where people feel comfortable using the streets and transportation in the way um, that they choose. So please keep the bike lanes. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker is Brad Cassidy. The Common Council has provided you a copy of Section 3244, Public Comment Period Rule. And yes, I do need to read this to everyone. Uh, are you in agreement with this? I am. 
Please state your name and maybe again. My name is Brad Cassidy. I live at the corner of Harder and Hobson, South Utica. I'm glad to be here and speak on this topic. Uh, four years ago, I moved to the area. I was recruited by a large unnamed medical device manufacturer in the area, and uh, it's been a good four years. I've come to make some really good friends, um, met my neighbors, have some great neighbors. The food is amazing. Uh, you know, the bones of this place is great. The architecture, everything is great. Um, how did I decide to come here? I got online and I, just like everybody else, Google, right? And you go online today and you Google Utica News, what do you find? Articles and stories and social media posts about bike lanes, right? This city has so much more to offer than this ongoing debate about bike lanes. I'm trying to hire supply chain professionals to come to the area. That expertise, for the most part, does not exist in this area currently. I'm trying to recruit people half my age to come to Utica to work as supply chain professionals, as packaging engineers, as uh, mechanical engineers, medical engineers, etc. It's difficult because all the drama that people are finding when they go online, this persistent, constant debate is making my job harder as a hiring manager at a local company. And I know, because I've talked to them, Indium, Wolf Speed, Special Metals, Fountainhead are all trying to recruit people to come to this area for, for positions and talent that does not exist in this area. Those people are going online and checking out the, t checking out the area, kicking the tires of Utica. And what are they finding? They're finding this this non-stop, months-long debate about bike lanes. I just ask you all, where does this stop? This needs to stop at some point. We need to make a decision and just stop with this so that I, as a business professional in this area, can get on with my job. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thomas Warda. The Common Council's provided you a copy of Section 3244 Public Comment Period Rule. Are you in agreement with this? Yes. Please state your name and you may begin. Hello, everyone. My name is Thomas Warda. I think I'm competing for employees with the last speaker. I'm a manufacturing engineering manager for Collins Aerospace, official homeowner in South Utica, 2104 Genesee Street. So happy to be there restoring an old home that's got a lot of character and a lot of love. I think it's a lot like the city. I'm in support of bike lanes being in Utica, uh, and I want to share why. As one thing that I miss from Central Illinois, I'm a former board member of a children's museum in in the place of a historic theater, the Orpheum Children's Science Museum. We had to close because we could not attract young talent to the board. It was a struggle to maintain. I heard from multiple candidates in the race for mayor yesterday speak about trying to bring talent here and whether they go and come back, all that. I think once they're here, we need to engage them and get them involved in volunteering and volunteer work. And they're gonna join organizations that they believe in. And unfortunately, they are gonna be swayed by the news they hear where a certain organization might say yay or nay or how they throw their support behind different efforts. I'm a result of that organization. I saw what it took to try to retain talent, to try to bring in new talent. And when you did things that the young talent didn't want to agree with, they found another place to volunteer for. They found another community to be a part of. I think that young talent is looking for complete streets. I think that young talent wants to come to Utica, and this is a distraction. Thank you. <clears throat> the last speaker this evening is Mark DiOrio. Common Council has provided you a copy of Section 3244 Public Comment Period Rule. Are you in agreement with this? Uh, yes, I am. Thank you. Uh, my name is Mark DiOrio. I'm not currently living in Utica right now. I did grow up in Utica. I still spend about four days a week here. 
I moved away a few years ago because of a house fire, but I am considering moving back. Um, that said, I am an avid cyclist. I do it for fitness and for leisure to clear my mind after I'm done with a stressful day of work. Uh, I just want to start out with kind of echoing the first gentleman, Alex Pex, um, kind of like piggybacking off of what you said. Am I over? No. <laughs> so, my husband was. So part of it is um, speaking on in terms of safety because I believe he addressed that. Uh, I've often myself found myself in situations where I had to swerve into traffic because there was no bicycle lane, excuse me, <clears throat> um, because somebody opens their door or somebody swerves towards me as they're cutting in from the right. I don't want to have to swerve into traffic. I would rather there be a bike lane here that provides adequate space between somebody opening their door and the actual vehicles of northbound southbound traffic. Part of the reason is very obvious. It's called inertia. I on my bicycle at the best case scenario weigh 210 pounds. If I have to swerve into traffic, I'm going to be smashed by a vehicle that easily weighs a ton. I don't have that protective cage around me that that driver has. Also speaking of cell phones these days, people being very distracted, maybe not paying attention to the bicycle. We see signs all over the place that say watch for motorcycles. It's the same with bicycles, except the bicycle is even smaller. Um, often when I'm passing cars on my right and there are too many cars that are parked, I can't see if there is a passenger or driver that's about to get out. I have to sit here and look into the windows as I'm driving because I don't want to be cruising along at 20 miles an hour, especially if I'm going northbound and down a hill towards the Mohawk River on Genesee Street and suddenly I have to slam on my brakes on a bicycle which is much more difficult to do at 20 miles an hour than it would be for a full-size car to do at 20 miles an hour with the you know with without risking hitting their door or the person getting out of the vehicle um, kind of piggybacking off of what Mick Rice also said and something I've been thinking about not everybody can afford a car and everybody has the ability to drive a car and some people lost their licenses and the bicycle might be their only way to get to work. If we want to be a complete city, if we want to cons consider all our residents and you know anybody here who's an elected official or a city leader, part of your responsibility of being a leader is to consider everybody's needs. Irregardless if you own a bicycle or not, if you hate bicycles or love them, you need to put your own desires, needs aside and consider everybody's needs because not everybody has the ability to drive a car. Um, another thing about bicycles and especially we have a lot of the electric bicycles now, we have all sorts of bicycles, right? We have road bicycles, people who pedal long distances. We have people that just need to get from point A to point B. We have people that are now part of the new, the new trend of electric bicycles. We have the Erie Canal path here. We have people that basically travel from Buffalo to Albany and back. And I've met them along the trail because I do occasionally ride from Oneida to Rome and sometimes to Utica if I'm doing a 50 mile bike ride that day. These people often, they wanna take breaks on hot days. And if there is a complete street and a bicycle lane that allows them to get to downtown to be able to support businesses, they're gonna do it. I can tell you from my, <clears throat> my personal experience that when I'm riding my bike and I'm often thirsty on a hot day or I get hungry, especially if I'm doing a long distance ride, I'll often stop by a business and I will get a cup of coffee or a beverage or a sandwich if I'm hungry. On the flip side of that, if the infrastructure is not there to support cyclists, and I often will take a ride down the road myself if the infrastructure is not there and I deem the road to be too dangerous, I'll just avoid that road altogether next time. And I don't think that's something that the local businesses along Genesee Street um, want to see happen. I'm just going to sum it up. I can say a lot more, but it's a matter of safety. It's a matter of commerce, and it's also a matter of inclusivity. Thank you. Thank you. That's the final speaker this evening. Mr. President, I'd like to waive the regular rules of order for the special meeting and bring this piece of legislation for a vote. Um, 
when you say this legislation, what are you referring uh, to? Ordinance number 11. Okay. Um, it, I was literally just going to call this for a vote. It's okay. sponsored by Council Member Miola. Okay. And um, is there a second? Councilman Beatrice has seconded the uh, seconded piece of legislation. It is now on the floor for a vote. If there is not any debate prior, I like to make some points. Council personnel, you have the floor. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I think we should thank you for everybody who came to speak and. Uh, I would just want to add, uh, you've heard all my opinions on the bike lanes, and I know that there's a lot of logistical like factors here of why people are against this, and it's not necessarily the bike lanes. In some cases, it's the frustration of the rollout of this project, which I've conceded it wasn't the best rollout, but that doesn't change today what we have in front of us of how we can legislate this five feet of space on each side of the road to be what I think should be an, an advisory bike lane. Uh, I think we've heard the points from even the Stanley and people who are concerned if a, if a car goes there, that it shouldn't be fair for them to be ticketed. So it, that's, I think, the difference of dedicated bike lanes versus advisory ones. So when we take this legislation and it says there shall be no bike lanes on Genesee Street, I think that's a little bit uh, too matter of fact of what we're going for or should be going for in the city. Uh, we have the chance to really market the city as accessible. Uh, not uh, for our residents, our college students, tourists. Uh, this is a really huge, uh, we talk about the Empire Trail over and over. I don't, I see people every day trying to make their way downtown, but if we actually made these lanes as actually green and painted them, you, you have even more of an ability to get people downtown. And it's not just about Genesee Street. The real goal here too is the connectability of the entire city. If you miss Genesee Street, we're gonna miss it for everybody else. And I don't think that's fair to any of the other residences. So I really hope that we vote this piece down tonight and come to the table to make what I think should be an advisory bike lane throughout, the Gen throughout Genesee Street. Uh, engineers have said that this was safer. The Federal Highway Administration, uh, they have studies in here of, for the bikeway selection guide. It says door zone bike lane section on page 30. A study of bicycle crashes found that streets with bicycle lanes had the fewest total door, dooring crashes compared to streets that were just sharrows, like that has been pitched today. So obviously, we, we talk about bike lanes. If you don't want to have that bike lane, we're gonna be riding in the one single lane road now with all the other cars. We can do that, but it will also, we go 10 miles an hour sometimes. I think it just slows down traffic when it's not necessary, when we have the space. Even if a door is open, you can still get around it. We have these five feet extra wide lanes. The door comes about three, two and a half feet the bike fits next to it safely. I think, yeah, this is my last plea. Vote down this legislation and let's come back to what these lanes should be designated, not just what they shouldn't be. Thank you. Thank you. Councilperson Friend, you have the floor. So I have a couple things. I guess the first thing, I, I, I'm confused by like the legal status of this. So I, I want our corporation counsel to address this, if, if you can. I'm confused by the legal interaction between this law, if we were to pass it, which seems likely, and the state law, right, section 1234 of, I don't know, state, this is New York state law, that says, so I'm just gonna read it for everybody's benefit, riding on roadways, shoulders, or bicycle, or inline skate lanes, and bicycle, or inline skate paths. So that's the title. Upon all roadways, any bicycle, or inline skate, shall be driven either on a usable bike or inline skate lane or if a usable bicycle or inline skate lane has not been provided near the right hand curb or edge of the roadway and I think that's part of what I'm getting hung up on I don't know where that is in relation to what we've already done or upon a usable right hand shoulder in such a manner as to prevent undue interference with the flow of traffic except when preparing for a left turn or when reasonably necessary to avoid conditions that would make it unsafe to continue along the near right hand curb or edge. Now, given that the legislation we already passed a few weeks ago, which converted this stretch of, of Genesee Street from four lanes to three with a center turning lane, that's done. We're not going to change that. There has to be a white line painted on the right hand edge I know I do, but since I've, I'm asking 
asking Mr. George, you haven't answered his question. All you right. have to be able to pay attention. So, Judge Garamone. Yes. Good. Technically, you're being addressed here. No. Judge? The corporation counsel is being addressed by councilperson Friend, Judge. Question to me? I was, no, I'm addressing a question to Ms. DiGiorgio, and I'm worried that she's, it's hard for her to pay attention right. when you distract her like that. All right, so please address the chair regardless. Thank you, everyone, including Judge Garamone and corporation counsel. Um, just please continue. Okay. And Judge Garamone, when councilperson's friend, when councilperson friend is done, then if you have a question for councilperson, she's being asked a specific question. She asked me a question? No, uh, councilperson friend is asking uh, corporation counsel a question. She's asking me a question. Yeah, okay. so. Okay. Yeah, so. Right, 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 right. I'm yes. sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. I okay. thought he was joining in no, consulting no. since he is the this council is attorney. Concern. Thank you. In any case, okay. Carry Thanks. on. Okay. So where I was? So you get my point, right? So I don't know what we're expecting bicycles to do if we pass this legislation, because that white line is there. Then there's this currently ambiguous lane, right? Whatever we, you know, the what is, what is the buffer lane? The channelization buffer. The channelization buffer <laughs> open door lane. I'm just this what it is. Right, and if we pass this, we're saying sorry. explicitly that's not a bike lane. So then I think we're telling people bicyclists they have to travel in the travel lane, but the state law is telling them they have to not interfere with traffic when there's another place for them to ride, which would seem to be the channelization buffer which, open door lane. Which from the prior. So I just think, yeah. I just think if I. Now, granted, my hypothetical is far-fetched, but if a cyclist said, you know what, I want to make sure I do it right in this city, I want to see what their laws, they read our laws, they read the state law, I think they literally don't know what they're supposed to do legally. Does that make sense? Well, no, 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 and as what the chair, do, Ms. DiGiorgio? I'm retaining the floor back, council, um, corporation council. Lieutenant Bro did answer this question at the previous meeting. So if you would like to try to answer this, I would like to just repeat the answer he gave at the previous meeting as well. That's fine. Mike. Do you have an answer? Uh, my answer is going to be what I gave at the last meeting anyways, which was I said shoulder lane. I mean, that's I don't know that that's necessarily a legal question of where they're supposed to ride. I mean, a designated bike lane, that's all this is. It's saying there's no designated bike lane that is only for bikes. So don't all right, so don't answer about our legislation. Answer about the state law. I if you were, I haven't reviewed that. I, it's really straightforward. It says that if you're in the state of New York, if there's a roadway where a car can travel, a bike can travel, and then it says they are to travel to the far right of that, but they're not to interfere with traffic. Well, if the road is a certain width, I would say they have to ride at the shoulder most part of that width of the road. And that's what. And, and in this instance, that means in the travel lane, correct? In the la in the travel lane, because this it also says don't interfere with traffic. All right. So one thing. It's just not Councilperson friend, one thing. You keep holding your hand up to me, and I am the chair of this meeting. And you keep going back and forth with Corporation Council, and I'm going to clarify what Lieutenant Broat told the council at the previous meeting, that if that end up striped, the channelization buffer, that effectively became the shoulder of the road. And that is what the state law was referring to. That's what he stated. He, both Corporation Council and Lieutenant Broat said, they would have to further look into the state law, but that would be the quote rightmost portion of the road, whether it was designated with bikes or diagonal stripes. That's what was stated. All right. Anything else on the matter? Can I? Yeah. I'll, t I'll, let, I'll let somebody else go, I'm but then I'd like the floor back, please. Well, I'm, I'm giving you the floor back. Oh, okay. Anything okay. else on the matter? Okay. Thank you. So, all right, that doesn't settle that for me. I don't. I don't think right. it's any more it's clear. Unsettled. That's my point. Right, and yeah. and maybe we shouldn't. Maybe Corporation Council, maybe the administration shouldn't send us laws when they don't know how it interacts with state laws. Just general, just general thinking. We already know how Complete Streets interacts with state laws. Okay, so, but now that sort of points to my bigger concern. We are expecting, I think, that the people who plan on voting for this want the cyclists to drive or ride their bicycles in the lane where there are cars. I think that that's what you want. 
despite the fact that there's like a five foot wide buffer lane there. So what you want is for the city to be less safe. And I just want to make that clear. So we pass safe streets, I'm sorry, complete streets. No one is debating trying to pull that back. That space is there, but you want, it's really important to some members of this council to make sure that cyclists by law aren't supposed to use it. I just think that's weird. I don't get the motivation. I don't get the motivation. And I think it's just to stick a thumb in the eye of legislation that you already lost on. Mr. President. No, Mr. President, um, can I Councilman Beatrice was requesting the yeah. floor prior, so I'm going to give the floor to Councilman Beatrice. Thank okay. you. I just got two things, a couple things very quickly. So tonight, I hear Councilperson Aiello tell us how this was rolled out wrong. I sat and listened to all these people, and I'm very grateful that they come. Number one, because there's not a bike lane, people have been riding bikes on Genesee Street for 100 years. There isn't one person on this common council that was ever against complete streets. It was the way they rolled it out 15 minutes beforehand. I just heard a lady out there say she heard this yesterday. Well, I heard about complete streets 15 minutes before, okay? And every person in there, okay, that's out there, if they did it the right way, you have a hospital, you have major things going on. They all talked about how great our city is growing, and they're so right. The way this should have been done is when the hospital opened, took a study, and did it. Okay, that's the way it should have been done, but it wasn't. It w we were lied to. We were told that the, uh, the, uh, the businesses were told. You know what? Just the way we hear these people out here with their legitimate complaints, do you know how many complaints I got about complete streets that I could have had people come here and talk about it, that I have to deal with it every place I go, that traffic is backed up and numerous stuff that's going on? But you know what? I come and do what I have to do, okay? And I'm not against totally a bike lane. I'm kind of confused why everybody's out here talking about this legislation tonight. We voted no bike lane four weeks ago. The only thing we're talking about is all of a sudden they came up with a buffer lane and we were going to stripe it. Nobody's talking how we're going to save the city about seventy-five to 80000 the one time when you have that lane there, but it's not going to have to be striped all the way down. And nobody's talking about how you have four mayors running for mayor, and I know probably three out of the four of them will probably be for changing the traffic pattern again. I can't speak for everybody. So I, I really don't understand the whole situation. The, this whole thing that we're talking about tonight is regarding a line. The bike lane was voted down three weeks ago. That's all I have tonight. Thank you. Councilperson Colasmo Testa, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, back in 2016, um, I took a lot of time out to incorporate complete streets into the city code, okay? And one of the things that I did in 2016 was incorporation of concept, concepts, features, and practices. And it states, the City of Utica Engineering Department shall incorporate, incorporate uh, complete streets concepts, design features, and practices to the extent appropriate and feasible in planning, design, budgeting, and implementation of local highway, street, and sidewalk improvement projects undertaken by the department. The Common Council has never been involved in implementing complete streets for the simple fact that it is nothing but politics. I am mortified and embarrassed that supplement, something that I implemented inside the city, known as complete streets, has been made such a mockery, mockery and an embarrassment to the entire city Okay, this council has been made a mockery of. The, the, anybody that did the survey has been made a mockery of. I've had enough, okay? I will be voting to rescind the ordinance to implement complete streets on Genesee Street for the simple fact that it wasn't done correctly. The next ordinance I am introducing is I am rescinding, okay? I'm going to propose rescinding complete streets entirely from the city code because I am embarrassed that my name was the original author on this piece of legislation. I want to know, out of the audience, how many people were asked here to come tonight by, by a certain council person? Nobody? You guys came here on your own free will? Every just single person Please address person the here. chair regardless. I just, I just wanted Thank to clarify. Thank you. The audience to does not have to answer. Okay? I just, I just, I just wanted, no, I just wanted to clarify no. that. With all due respect. You were circus and you were monkey, bud, so figure it out. So, count, count, 
Council, Council, Council President, they already addressed us. Stop. Just for clarification purposes. I will be introducing oh, a piece I'm, I'm taking back the floor. You're I'm taking gonna, back the floor. I need to ask for order, order in this room. You can ask please. Sure, go ahead. Completely. Because I've had enough. The way this works is if someone gets out of line, the chair brings them back into line, which is exactly what I did. Okay? Please continue and address the chair. Thank you. So with that said, I'll be introducing another piece at, at our next council meeting to rescind complete streets entirely from the code because this is, this is totally out of control. Because the Common Council should not even be involved in this process from the get-go. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? I have one last piece, if I may. Uh, as long as this is coming to a close, I wanted to add, so when I said, obviously, it, I conceded that this trial was rolled out, it could, it could have been improved, for sure. Um, I just, I wanna be sensitive to that fact. And I think a lot of people think that if we vote in bike lanes and all of a sudden it, it approves of how this was done and it makes maybe you would think I or other people on the council could just do this again and get away with it or whatever the notion is. Uh, that's, uh, I think we learned a lot from this trial. I know people were given this 15 minutes before and uh, I can go on and on about that. Uh, I, I focus on the six months that we had to really look at this and that's why people are in here today on their own free will uh, I'd like to also talk about this legislation of complete streets policy that apparently took so long to write because uh, the city of Auburn has the same thing written. It's identical from 2015. So there's a lot of aspects to it. I'm grateful for it. I don't think we need to rescind it. But it's because it's a proven concept working in other cities word for word as is our complete streets policy. Um, but that said, yeah, I think we can separate, obviously, I, I'm hoping we can separate the rollout of it and learn from it and not do it that way again. A lot of policies and procedures came up that way, but to keep it separate from what this bike lane situation is now. I know you voting for it, if you voted for bike lanes, it wouldn't be condoning how the start of this was, and I wanna separate the two if possible. Uh, but I, I'm still, of course, in favor of complete streets and this legislation, so I'll leave it at that, thank you. Thank you, before this is voted on, the audience has discussed multiple times um, how this came about. So just for informational purposes, I would like to invite everyone who is here tonight to know that on YouTube, all of these meetings, since this was introduced last October, do exist on YouTube. You can watch them. And where we are today is not where we started. All the people in this room started from a place of wanting to see process and the complete streets policy play out. You are all welcome to view all those meetings and I would appreciate if you would check those out considering you did take the time to listen to all these council people at this juncture as well. All right. Council person DeBrango, you have the floor. Yes, Mr. President, thank you. Uh, I just wanna make sure that if we're gonna vote on this piece tonight, just explain to me exactly what's going to happen if we vote yes on this piece or no on this piece? Because are we gonna eliminate the buffer lanes as well? Are we, gonna, I, are we going to eliminate the solid white line? I will, will that be removed? I will answer. Sides, north and south, hold on. Okay. Uh, we'll be eliminating the five foot lane, obviously, if we take out, take out the white lane. So uh, the white line. So I just wanna know exactly what we're voting on and I wanna make sure that uh, every council person knows what we're voting on okay. before we cast our vote. All right, so first thing, the actual um, road striping from Oriskany Street all the way to Cottage Place, the actual plan the council voted on um, a few, uh, about a month and a half ago and approved is on ECO 360. What that plan shows is from Oriskany Street to Cornelia Street, it is the three lanes, the middle lane being the turn lane, and it also exemplifies on that plan the five foot channelization buffer or bike lane, whichever it ends up, on that map. At Cornelia Street, in any version of this, since the beginning on Cornelia Street, the bike lane goes away and it becomes a multimodal lane because Genesee Street is narrowed by 12 feet. 
That is what's on the plan and that's what was already voted on by the council when they actually implemented the three lanes. Now, if this is approved, what will end up striped will be that, that line will stay there, but then the expectation is there will be cross hatching in between where the cars are parked and that line. If this is not approved, the expectation is that it would be stenciled with bikes due to the current complete streets policy. So that is what is on paper. And if anyone in this room wants to view the actual plan that was approved and was supposed to be the original trial, um, it's on ECO 360. Um, I don't recall the date, but it's two and a half meetings ago, three meetings ago, special meetings included. And uh, the entire map is there, and that's what's expected to be uh, striped. So specific to this legislation, the five-foot lane on either side will be there regardless. It's just a matter of whether it'll have crosshatch striping or the bike stencil in it. Okay. Can I have the floor? Yes. All right. Obviously, this is an ongoing discussion. And we had a, we had a prominent attorney come here, and she was a judge. She was an elected judge. And the, the one thing that I worry about, if we're, we're going to designate this as a bike lane, the, the quote that she left us is, this is, this is a disaster. This is a disaster waiting to happen. This is a lawsuit waiting to happen. And that, 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 st that stuck in my mind from, from day one. I know a, a gentleman came in here from another city and they designated the bike lane and a person, I don't know if he got killed or injured or whatever, but there was a lawsuit against the city because they designated a certain lane to, for bikes. So I, I, I'm concerned about what she said, her experience over the years, I think resonated to me to say, is this the right thing to do when you have a parked vehicle, a bike lane, and then an actual lane for traffic? Is this the right thing to do uh, with our city? You have, to concern, you have to be concerned about a possible lawsuit. She speaks from experience, so I have to, I have to honor the, you know, what she said. So that's the one thing. But before we vote on this, I, I'd like to, send in a couple amendments, if, 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 I, if I can do that, if anybody wants to back me up on this. But I want to amend a couple things here before we vote on it. Uh, wh what are the amendments? Would you like to make a motion? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to amend. I, I asked him what the motion was. Right, right. 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 I didn't recognize it though, oh, okay. so it's fine. Thank you. Okay, Your my, amend am my amendment would be, it says, shall be no bike lanes, I would like to add, or buffer lanes. The solid white line shall be removed, eliminating the five foot lane on either side of Genesee Street, heading north and south. One single lane shall exist only. And I want to do it, I also want to make another amendment just above Ariskany Street to the Naharford Town Line. I want to make sure that we don't do this in other parts of the city. We had several, several businesses complain. So and the one main business, hold on, the one main business, the Stanley, was, was uh, very adamant that having a bike lane and, and the complete, and whatever, the road diet in front of the Stanley would, very, would affect their business and I just want to make sure that we don't extend it any further. So and, and I know there was talk about extending it to, to New Hartford. So that's my amendment. If somebody wants to jump on board, fine. If they don't, I, I'm going to introduce it that way. So procedurally, we would have to split that into two amendments. And just as a note, Ariskany Street to Cornelia Street does encompass where the Stanley is already, just so you're aware. Okay. Um, but the, the first mo piece of that motion to eliminate that five foot wide shoulder lane or channelization buffer or bike lane, whichever it ends up. Um, Corporation Council, I believe, wants to mention something about that. And I'm with you on this. Yeah. yeah, so there's two things. First of all, it's not the appropriate spot for in this, and you can't really legislate it within Complete Streets. Complete Streets is dealing with safety, pedestrians, and- It's a policy. Uh, it's, yeah, yeah, to correct. implement, right. Um, 
Secondly, um, as I said at the previous meeting, there are designated widths of the road that have to be met, so there cannot be a road that is, I think this will be 17, maybe 18 feet wide. About 18 right. feet. But we can extend the center lanes as well, make them wider, make them, you know, put, you, put, I, put the yellow I, markings in the center. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take back the full, I'm gonna take back I the floor for a minute. You listen, would have to augment the entire map that was listen, ordained. Listen, listen, in New York State law, no, you I'm could have up to like 16 feet for one single lane. Yes. So let's find 16 feet for one single lane and how we work it out, whether we have a two foot buffer or 16 feet. This will, this will avoid people from driving on that because you know what they're gonna do. It's gonna be used as a bike lane, let's face it. So why don't we make the lane 16 feet on both sides? That's legal and that's considered a single lane in New York State. Look it up. So, so that's what we should do. So the only thing I'm gonna add Well, the way I have to process this is if the motion has a second, then we can keep talking about it, council. Okay, there's a second, now. So the only thing I'll add is I'm not an engineer. I don't design streets. Um, I don't know all of exactly all of the ins and outs of what goes into designing a street and widths of roads without looking at it and without researching it. Um, I don't know that if it's possible to just keep adding and making those lanes and making those lanes and adjusting them to what you want it to be. I would defer to engineering or DPW, whoever is going out there and doing it, that those are the professionals and you should be listening to them on that component. Um, but I mean, I would re not recommend it just because there are specific um, guidelines from uh, New York State DOT regarding the lanes and how big they should be in. All right, so I'm gonna process these motions because the council can do as the council wishes, okay? Uh, but I am but requesting that you split it into two. So the first one would be for the lane width. The second motion, which you would make after this is processed, would be um, the piece you made uh, from Arisney Street to New Hartford Town Line. Mr. President, can I ask Corporation Council a question? very quickly yes so when everything you're saying councilman DeBrango states that in the law you can have a lane 16 feet correct you're not aware of what he's saying or you just because I, I don't really understand if it I, says we can I have believe, I believe you can but I believe DOT's recommend uh, recommend okay. the 10 and the 12 okay yes. but when we when we right. voted on this program wait we voted they were gonna have number one Instead of going two lanes each way, we voted one lane each way and a turning and parking lane. There was nothing in there that said anything about a five foot lane for any of this. So now, Councilman DeBrango is telling me and telling all of my colleagues here that the law is you can have a 16 foot lane. So we voted on three lanes. So it should be 16, 16, turning and parking. So the, so, the I need okay. I need to step in here. The issue is that you've passed a map of how Genesee Street will be striped with widths and measurements previously. The only the only the only, the only other thing I'm going to add is some of this is not necessarily in your purview to legislate. I mean, these are widths of the road. I mean, these should be left up to the professionals. You did designate you wanted three lanes. It's up to the engineering department to set those lanes and do what they need to do. You did not want the bicycle lane when you passed what you passed several weeks ago. There has to be something that delineates that. The reason this is all being presented to you is because there's a conflict in the legislation of how it's gonna be done. So, and again, I don't know that it's the appropriate place to be putting things in here about designating widths of roads and where they should be within this specific piece right here that, I, that has been presented. And that's what I'm going to say on the point. So there's a second for this motion, um, but but I, I um, I'm not trying. This is not an opinion on your motion. I'm the chair, but I still don't. I'm just stating that you did pass the map as you passed it prior. Agreed. Okay. Agreed. Yeah. So Agreed. so I'll I'll bring this motion to a vote. I guess. Um, well. Your I mean, vote's on the motion to amend. This is the motion to amend. Can we debate first? That there will. It's not that big of a try. It's just one statement. That I yeah. Say. Yeah. You may have the floor. I'm yeah. just uh, because this is a big deal. It's when when roads are wider than they need to be for the amount of traffic we have, the faster people go. That's the whole point of why we were obviously you have 12 lanes, 12 foot wide lanes. 
Uh, I know you said that the judge said a lot of things that concerned you, but New York State DOT was in here saying what concerned them. And CNS Engineering, actual engineers, designated these to be 12 foot wide lanes. If you guys want to revisit it, I say just, I would ask, bring engineers in before anybody voted yes on that. I don't know why that's funny when we literally did the first time and nobody listened, maybe that's the joke. But All right. That's your opinion, but listen. Uh, well, so the motion's on the floor for a vote, so you. Yeah. All right, vote, vote on the motion. Debate. He had a second motion. Do you want to process your second yeah. motion? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the second motion, please state. It started the entire city uh, wide bike lane. No. Where, where did it go? Yes. There it is. Okay. Yeah, clerk, you have a view of a better. Okay. The motion was to amend stating Genesee Street from Oriskany Street to new, the new Hartford town line was Councilman DeBrango's motion. Is there a second? Petrus is the second. Um, please vote on the motion. Do we have a debate? Do we speak? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Can you tell us what we're voting on at this point? So now what you're voting on is an amendment where the exemptions will now read from Ariskany Street to the New Hartford Town Line rather than Ariskany Street to Penelope Place. I would just like to add, uh, if we're talking about this, I don't understand the 16 foot wide lane thing still plus the bike lanes. So you wanna make 16, fi 16 feet wide lanes because right. you're concerned a biker, a, a cyclist no, might- I, I have to take the floor back because we have to process the motion that's at hand. I know, but this is about it too. But if we're concerned, so it's about the bike- about New Harbor Town Line right now. Okay, well e either way, we're con it, it goes hand in hand. No, the, the motion on the floor is regarding the amendment from Ariskany Street to New Harbor Town Line. Um, but if bikers, so whatever the width of the road is down, I guess we don't, we, we never had studies for the rest of it, but if you're concerned about a biker being in that side of the road, no matter what part of the street, okay. then what's the, that's not true because it completely contradicts if you're fine with it, if there's three lanes that are 16 feet wide each, but all of a sudden that magical line's not there. Right. So that's- After Cornelia that Place, sense. even in the plan that was passed, there's no bike lane. But so it's it also wider, not germane to the conversation. All the way down to New Hartford. But doesn't it, how, how wide is the road all I, the way down there? Why are we voting if we don't know how wide the I road is? I don't have the answers to your questions. But that's, I have to address the chair. I'm trying to. I know, I know, hands, and, that's and no one in the room guys, has the answers Guys, we're a council that represents the city. We're not, we don't yeah. even know how wide the road is. We want to eliminate right. bike lanes from Ariskany right. Street to- But uh, why? Please, the Harper Town Council. Line. That's that simple. Council, council. For safety, but, but for safety. Why? For safety. Council. For a lawsuit, come on. Just Council, please, just vote please vote on the motion. Can I know why it's Cast your vote. votes. Can Mr. DeBrango take the floor and address just why it's for safer? Safety. No, no one actually please. has the floor. Cast your votes on this motion, please. We're about to vote on something and we don't know if it's actually safe or not. Are we going to send, I'm going to like get a three seconds away from the center. This is about oh, now we want to, okay. Please. No, please. We don't know if this is safe or not. Nobody has ever had debate I on this. Listen, as a matter of Robert's rules, you've repeated the same thing multiple times. Well, I'm taking the floor back, times. and no one in the room has the answer to your plea. I apologize for that. Thank I'm processing you. this motion as the chair. Your votes. Councilperson Friend. Six days adopted. All right, this piece is amended. And now for the vote on the actual piece, Ordinance 11. I'd like to make a motion to bring your own vote to the floor, please. Well, that's, that's I just stated. Ordinance 11. Mr. President, can you? Sponsored by Councilman Miola, seconded by Beatrice, amended twice by Councilman DeBrango. It is on the floor for a vote. Can you read the whole thing as it would be then? Yes. Okay. Um, obviously, be it ordained is the same. Um, the 231 8 exemptions now reads notwithstanding the complete streets policies and principles cited herein, 
there shall be no bike lanes on Genesee Street from Oriskany Street to the New Hartford town line. The next sentence now reads, no bike lanes or buffer lanes. Can you read the full sentence? Because I jotted that down. Yes. Yeah, because it's on, it's on the record. Yeah. No bike lanes or buffer, buffer lanes uh, shall exist on Genesee Street, and there shall be one single lane. That was the motion. Yeah. And that's the second sentence. Your votes. Yeah, she may qualify your vote. You have the floor. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, you may I'm qualify sorry. your vote. Yeah. Uh, the, the way that the legislation is now, I'm, I, I love to see bikes. I, I can't see bikes going down the way it's set up now with the, the cars on the right, the cars on the left. You know, if, if you know, I'm not getting any younger, and, 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 and I go down there and, and I go to look over my shoulder and I don't see something, I open my door and, and, and the next thing you know, a 10 speed, 12 speed, whatever they are today, I don't know. We only had one speed, but, uh, you know, I, and, until we as a council can look at fixing the problem, whether it takes the parking away to extend the bike lane to make it safer, uh, I can't. I can't support a bike lane in, until we can do that because I, I haven't, I just, I can't do it in, in good heart. So uh, I thank you, I guess. Thanks. I, I have, of course, would like the floor back one last time. You had the floor. Thank you. Uh, I, I was okay with, uh, well, not okay, but I understood that tonight how likely it was that bike lanes would not be a factor. And I figured that shoulder length road would just be something else, whatever we call it. But the biggest part about the shoulder now of getting out of your car, you can actually get out of your car safer. It's not about the bike lane. It's now that you actually have the freedom. Before we were opening our car door and getting in the middle of traffic to whether you're getting out of baby stroller or any of this, and now that's being taken away by this amendment, and that's what's very extreme is the buffer lane we are about to lose just for the safety of the street and being able to uh, Get out safer. I, I don't know. I just want to put on record that there is nothing safer about this in any capacity. The council, if you vote this through, you are voting to make the street more dangerous. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. I, I just, I mean, I think that this is repetitive of what Katie just said, but I've been saying from the beginning that the best part, from my point of view at least, of the complete streets was the fact that you could now park your car and get out without literally stepping in front of vehicles going 40 miles an hour and we're going back to that and anybody who votes for this it's just it's going to be so and it's going to be a 16 foot lane which means people are going to be swerving around all the science all the data in the world shows that what you if you vote for this you are voting for a less safe Utica you are voting for a less safe Utica for whatever reasons of your own but you're putting safety the, the public safety of this city second <coughs> Like Mark to, Williamson, like you have the floor. To that, please. You know, I've been on this thing from the beginning. The reason why I voted this down from the very beginning is because the chief of police and the fire chief now even look at this before it even came to the floor. So you're talking about safety. Shame on you. This is ridiculous. Let's get done with this. It's all politics. It's all politics. Councilman DeBranco. Yes, it was up to me. I'd bring everything back the way it was and right. not even touched it at all wow. until the hospital was completed and we should have done it then it was shoved down our throats we all know it we never notified the businesses we never notified the residents there you didn't you did not we heard it from the from the owner of griffin's pub i've heard it from several owners down there i heard it from bank presidents down there so don't say you notified the public because you never did so this thing has been a cluster it, it was just it just it's just been uh, just right. a thorn in my side for the week for 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 the last couple of months I just, you wanted the single lane, you got your single lane, but you snuck in the bike lane afterwards. Right. And that's, and, and, and you heard a professional uh, judge just to, to say to I won't address the chair, judge, let him judge, speak, this, the votes, yeah. And I'm just saying, yeah, the, judge, okay. the judge said to us that this is a lawsuit waiting to happen. How, how, what don't you understand? So let's, let's look at it somewhere right. down the road. I don't yeah. know, but I don't want to put 
I don't want to put the city in jeopardy by having something there that could be dangerous to the public. I think it's more dangerous to the public to have some, some people driving a bike between two vehicles that potentially could be moving on, on both sides of them. So I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not for it. This, this is what I'm for. Right. You want your single lane, you got your single lane. 16 feet single lane. Let the engineers figure out what they want to do and where they want to put that white line. I say just move it two feet closer to the vehicle. All right. There's your 16 In the foot same lane. vein as clawing back the, the floor vehicle, from the Councilperson Aiello, these things have been stated already. Uh, you have, all right. And that's it. Okay. After you. Okay. All right. Um, meetings ago, I let you know that um, I grew up in Utica and I rode my bike all the time and it was close to cars because that's what <coughs> I needed to do because we were sharing the road with, um, with cars. So I don't understand the safety and lawsuits thing. Are we going to get a lawsuit if we don't vote it in and somebody gets injured? I mean, what's the difference? We're going to get a lawsuit anyway. So everybody keeps talking about lawsuits and safety and everything. It's been unsafe for years because we've never had a bike lane. And if we had a bike lane, now it's, it wouldn't be safe. So what's the difference? I agree. I agree the lawsuits and the safety and all of that stuff should have been in place 100 years ago when people were riding bicycles. So it's going to be a tough vote tonight, but we do have to vote on it. So let's get it done. They're up there. I'm having the clerk call the vote right now. Pull it. Thank you. Six days adopted. Okay. Is there a motion? If you have any questions about how the engineers are going to implement this, now you're going to have to ask engineering because I have the same reservations with what just happened as well. I just I make um, a motion to adjourn. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.